Coming up in this video, the parts finally arrive to fix the pooper. And it's time to hopefully resolve our heater problems once and for all. I'm Ben, this is Rebecca. We're leaving Alaska to drive our 4x4 expedition vehicle around the world. Between honoring our dogs through their golden years and then COVID, this is our third attempt at leaving the country. Join us as we prepare for the first leg of our journey, traversing the subarctic winter conditions of Alaska and Canada. Okay, well, next up on the list is an easy job for a very cold weather day. And if you remember correctly, on the Dalton Highway, this, Rebecca's little yellow button, it broke on us. It was a little difficult finding the part because this is not available in the United States anymore. So we had to get it from a website based out of the UK. And I actually paid double the price of this part just to get it here. It's amazing how such a minute piece can cause such a problem and we duct taped it but all right let's see here <clears throat> okay there we go this needs a little turn and i want to be extra careful oh my, oh, okay, I just wasn't all the way over. Okay, so now it's just coming off by hand already. Let's go back to this plastic little putty knife. Work it on around. And, okay. Ooh, yeah, yummy. Good stuff here. Mmm. I'll be right back. I'm going to go clean this up better in a sink. Okay, all cleaned up. By no means immaculate, because yes, it is part of the pooper, but it is good enough for me to reassemble. Okay, well, that's the boiler because it's cold outside and I'm working in the garage. So you're just gonna have to deal with that noise. But I'm also gonna make sure this side of things is clean so we get a good seal. And now, let's open this little repair kit. directions huh oh let's see here our directions even needed Ben three pieces all right I normally wouldn't read the directions but considering what is on the line I'm gonna read the directions well this is the furthest thing from rocket science but considering the efforts that I had to go through to get the parts I'm not gonna do anything stupid and just like I thought, it wouldn't be overly complicated. Put that in. Put the spring on top. I should uh, line up the little notches here on the button. And it literally should... Oh, darn it. Okay. Let me reseat that. Spring. And keep your finger on that plunger down below, Ben, and snap. Oh, did you hear that? I felt it. And it's spring-loaded again. Okay, good. It doesn't say anything about this being required, but I'm just going to take a little petroleum jelly and put it around this O-ring just so it slides in easier. And our plan before we actually hit the Pan American is to buy extra parts for this thing at least, or get it replaced and maybe go composting. I don't know yet, but anything that could break and cause poop to leak out, I'm going to want to have extra parts for. And that's going to be the obvious items, like probably another one of these, because it was only like six pounds, UK. This right here, this puppy has the potential of falling off 
uh, when you're dumping it. And then this right here, there we go. That right there, I've been a little nervous about for years, but we're gonna get that part here. And then this other little breather and then this. So essentially, I want to make it so that if there is a problem, it's not going to mean poop and fecal matter splashing around and going everywhere. You know, if the little kind of the water supply issue for the toilet has a fault, oh well, I can deal with that. I can pour a little bit of uh, water from a bottle into the toilet. But poop leaking out is a game-changing problem. Now back to the project at hand, I can see tabs right here and tabs down in there. Going to get it lined up. Okay, it's seating down. Okay, that's good. Now, let's give it a twist. Okay. All right, there it is. There's an arrow on the case and an arrow on this. So we are in business. Spring-loaded vent button is functional again. All right, that's one more thing knocked off the to-do list. All right. Packages are rolling in and we can move forward. Today we are going to work on the S bar and some Amazon stuff came in as well. All right, this is what $1,068 looks like. Okay. Well, as you can see, the temperature has changed a little bit. We got some snow. Then we got some rain, and now it's about to turn uh, freezing cold again. But right now I'm guessing that we are only a few degrees above uh, freezing right now. Well, nothing to it but to do it. Let's jump into this project. Okay, so I got the wiring harness connector undone, and now I need to disconnect the coolant going into the unit which comes from an inline and back here an outline. And back here is the other one. Uh, come on off. I know you want to come off. Okay, come on. Get off there. Come on, almost there. Okay, hose clamp fell, but I can handle that. Okay, you can see right here, there's the two lines that are now disconnected. Okay, two more little hose clamps to loosen up. And that should be good. I'm not gonna get those out until I pull out the whole unit though. Okay, a 10 millimeter, loosened up the clamp for the exhaust, and just kinda pull it down and just gonna let it rest here in this case. Okay, there's a diesel fuel line that needs to be undone. It's going to be a little hard for you guys to actually see. So you guys have to take my word for it. Okay, here it comes. There it is. Okay. You can kind of maybe get a glimpse of it there. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I'm moving forward. Okay. Now for the fun part. I need to loosen up these so that the S part actually comes out. Okay, I'm about to give up on trying to record this process and do this process. It has just been way too complicated messing with the camera. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it. When I say I got the unit removed and it was sitting right there. Okay. Here's the old unit. Time to, uh, what was that? A little washer or something, but all right, here's the old unit. Time to uh, swap it out with a new one. That one's tight. Okay. 
There we go. Okay, there's the nut, the washer, the bolt. The unit should be free now. Famous last words. Oh. Okay, there's another nut and washer and the bolt. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. The bolt is in the bottom of this tray. All right, there it is. Some dumpster mud in here. Gotta love that crap. Okay, now I just need to remove the SPAR unit here by detaching it from these hoses. Come on now. Come on. Wow, this one's a bugger. Come on now. You're so close. Okay. Uh, it's removed. Before I go any further, I am going to get all of this dumpster mud out of here. That can't be doing it any favors. And I don't necessarily think that was my problem because my current problem is with the coolant circulation. Ooh, I got snot dripping off my nose. The coolant circulation pump, which is a sealed system, not like the uh, air intake, which is what would be affected by this, but I'm getting it out of here. Look at that, that is nasty stuff. I don't think I'm ever gonna live down the wrath of the dumpster highway. Amazing trip though, but still, I think for the life of me on this truck, I will always find dumpster mud. Okay, the box is all clean. And once again, I have grossly underestimated the amount of time it takes me to do things. I thought that since this was like the third time going into it, maybe an hour, three at the most, well, I'm three hours into it, and granted, I'm about to crest the hill and go down and uh, put it all together, and which always happens faster, but damn, I always do this. And it's lunchtime. Can't forget to eat. Thank you. Do you need something to wash your hands? Ah, uh, no. A little dirt is fine. Juice. Thank you. <clears throat> what are you doing today? Uh, computer club. Mm. I've got... Who's in your computer club today? Just me, myself, okay. and I. <laughs> it's busy. We chat a lot in there. <laughs> okay. All right. Eating lunch. Okay. We are pretty much back together completely on this end. I'm just going to tighten up that hose clamp there. Tighten up this hose clamp here. And we should be in business. One thing I want to do while I have this angle is just loosen this. This is the bleeder, so I can burp air out of the system. And I just wanted to make sure it wasn't too tight before I get it into a position where loosening it might be a little more difficult. Okay, the reinstall went light years quicker. And let's see here. The cover's still off, but the coolant lines are hooked up. The fuel line is hooked up and the harness and exhaust. Now for the moment of truth to fire things off, I do have to switch one thing over here. So as I've mentioned, we can heat the camper box while we're driving. I just have to flip this switch. But when we're parked and working off the S part, it needs to be in that position. Okay, let's come over here to the thermostat. Okay, I hear a blower clicking on in here and I know it's going to take a minute for fuel to uh, prime because the system was completely empty. I ended up having a uh, wiring issue as well. It is operating now and it's going to take a minute for it to fire off. That blue connector on that red wire is what was uh, giving me fits. And just through the process of troubleshooting things, I could not bring you guys along. 
It's hard enough being a one-person filming show sometimes. Okay, it just powered down again. There's no codes flashing onto the display, but I really should set the clock at least. Okay, let me come in here. Let's flip the thermostat off and back on. There very well could have been air in the diesel line, uh, lack of coolant flow. So let's just see what happens here. And nothing's happening back here. Okay, I went and reset things and it fired off again. But I kind of remember, I hate to say it, but these things are kind of finicky, but when they work, they are amazing. So let's see if this sticks and if it fires off. Okay, I'm on my fourth attempt at uh, cycling it. Starting to get a little pissed, a little tired, a little cold, a little done for the day. I uh, thought, hey, let me turn on the engine of the Fuso, maybe circulate some coolant through the system because it's all one giant loop and maybe there's an air pocket causing problems. I don't know. At this point, I am freaking done. The S-Bar is kind of starting to fire off now. So let's see what happens. Uh, in case I haven't mentioned it, I'm done for the day, but I can't be done. I need to get this running. I don't want to jinx myself, but I think I'm slowly making some progress. So it was not uh, fuel, like air in the fuel lines that was the problem. I'm pretty confident it was air in the coolant system just causing it not to work right. And I remember it was a bugger to uh, get bled because the previous owner has a little pressure relief thing installed right here and another one installed right here. So there's nothing uh, coming out right there, which means that I'm not getting good circulation yet. This is one of my uh, registers. That's a cold line and that's a cold line. But on a positive note, the S part is still running. Okay, five o'clock Alaska time, getting dark here. Things are uh, looking good. I think I bled almost all the air out because it's been running uh, like this for at least 10, 15 minutes, which is good. And all that smoke is just the stuff burning off. I'll just put it that way. So I'm not too concerned about that. Oh, it's slowing down. That could mean either it reached its temperature and it's doing its kind of intelligent thing I'm backing off or means I'm not done yet. Okay, knock on wood, or as some parts of the world say, touch wood. I'm done. It's done. It ran for like an hour and a half and nothing is ever cut and dry and easy. There's always going to be challenges and it's like six o'clock now. Have a good night, guys. Coming up in the next video, packages are rolling in from Amazon and falling on the ice leads to my first nude scene. Can you look at my ass? Okay, so it's on my left cheek. <gasps> oh my goodness. What is it? Be sure to subscribe to our channel and join the Outliers YouTube community for early video releases, exclusive content, live chats, and so much more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road.